up guys, this might be one of the most complicated OBS stream setups, check it out. What's going on guys? Brandon Havrilla from Red Max Events. Welcome back to the channel. Today, I want to talk to you about my live streaming setup using OBS, live streaming to Facebook with percussion and a DJ. Now this setup's fairly easy. Really all I'm running is three different computer software, two different camera angles, one digital console, one analog console, six different microphones, and an audio interface. Obviously it's a fairly complex system to run through OBS and get to Facebook Live. But in the meantime, check out the final product and then we'll take a closer look. One goes out to everybody that went clubbing in the 90s. Come on, thumbs up, volumes up, let's go. Once again, if you guys are just joining us, just tuning in, we appreciate you. Thank you. Joe, what do you got to say? Shout out to everybody dancing in the kitchen like this, come on. Now, I first had the pleasure of playing percussion along with DJ Joe from Wired Up Entertainment at the Mobile DJ Meetup in Allentown, PA. We had a lot of fun, stayed friends ever since. So he was the first one I reached out to when I wanted to make this concept a reality. Now, just to start things off, I will say that Joe was not actually live. He was pre-recorded. However, I was playing live to his recording. It would be pretty difficult to sync the two of us up live and use a software like Zoom or something, relying on two different internet connections. It just would not be stable. So basically, I have five microphones on my drums themselves. I mic them in pairs using instrument mics, kick drum mics, drum mics, everything like that. And then I have one overhead to capture the cowbells and the cymbals. The sixth mic I mentioned is this SM58 right here, which was a vocal mic so that I could talk to the stream, interact with guests as I saw comments coming in, and make any announcements I needed to make. All of these mics I have running into a small snake, which is then going into my digital console, which I'm running a Midas M32R. Now the main reason I chose to run all my drums and everything into the Midas M32R is A, it has more inputs than my audio interface, so I could actually bring all the microphones in mix them and then send them back out. But the Midas also has built-in effects, so I was able to add a little reverb to my voice and the various percussion, EQ each mic individually, and then send the master mix out of the Midas. The last reason and the most important reason is because in order for me to play drums along to Joe, I had to hear his audio that was synced up with his video in my in-ear monitors or my headphones. So what I ended up doing was send the headphone jack from my computer into the Midas as an input. What that allowed me to do is then mix his levels with my drums and my vocal mic and send a monitor mix out of this board into my headphones so I could just hear the music or whatever drums I want. What then happened was because his music is part of my drum mix and my microphone, I then sent the left and right out of my Midas and sent it into my audio interface. Now the audio interface I have is a Steinberg UR44, which has four XLR ins with an additional two quarter inch inputs on the back. I do have individual control of each input gain, as well as a USB out, which then goes into my computer and is recognized as an audio input source. For those of you just trying to stream a DJ setup, this is a very easy way to do it. I know there's devices like the iRig, which allow you to plug directly into your phone, but if you did want to run through a computer to run OBS and create a quote unquote more visually appealing healing stream, you could do so using an audio interface. There's a bunch out there, Scarlett, Steinberg, Tascam. You can find them all over Amazon. I'll have a link to this one down below as well as the Scarlett where you could purchase them on Amazon should you wish. I'm also gonna include purchase links to the other stuff I talk about in this video, but please note that due to the influx of everyone wanting to stream, a lot of places are sold out of this equipment or back ordered for a month or so. Now I'm gonna open up OBS and show you guys how I have OBS configured, but basically I have my left and right from my Midas controller going through the UR44 interface, which is then converting it to USB into my computer. So when I go into OBS, I'm going to select a new source and I'm gonna add an audio source, which is gonna be my main audio that I'm sending to the feed and I'm gonna mute everything else, all my cameras, everything else is gonna get muted. 
when I add that new audio source, because I have the drivers installed for my interface, it's gonna give me the option for the Steinberg UR44. So I'll select that and then adjust the levels on the Steinberg and the Midas until they sound good in the stream. Now, because I had to bring in a video of DJ Joe actually DJing, that can easily be done by selecting a media source in OBS. What made things more complicated was that I had to send that output to my headphones or to the Midas console and not send it to the stream through OBS because once it goes through the console, the console's spitting it back to OBS through the interface. And this is where things started to get complicated. So what I had to do was download VLC Media Player. And once you do so in OBS, you have an option to add a VLC Media Source. What I did then was added a VLC Media Source Source, selected his video clip from my computer. Once you go into advanced audio settings on that source, you can change the audio output to monitor only and turn it off so it doesn't send to the stream. And what monitor only means is it's only sending it for you to monitor that signal. Now in the main settings of OBS, you can go in and select what your monitoring device is. So you could select that as the Steinberg or a different device should you wish. But what I chose to do was select my computer headphone jack as the monitoring source. I then came out of the headphone jack and ran it into the Midas as an input. And that's how I sent just his track into the Midas, which then gets processed with my drums and sent back out to the stream. That pretty much covers everything on the audio side. Now in OBS, you can import still images, videos, and other files as well to make it more pretty. So what I did was created a design in Photoshop using the resolution that OBS gave me. I then created two blank areas where our two videos were gonna be placed because OBS allows you to place the different sources and elements wherever you would like. So I placed two blank white cards so that I can create a drop shadow around them. This way, once I place the videos on, it looks a little better. Once I imported that into OBS, the only other source or file I really added to OBS was a scrolling text effect at the bottom, which is super easy to do. You simply go to add source, then choose the text effect, type whatever text you want. And once you go into the settings or you right click that source, there will be a filters option where you could choose scrolling text and adjust the various parameters. I did this so that at the bottom it says, thank you for watching, please share with your friends. But you can make this say anything, follow me on Instagram, whatever you want. And you could place it within your OBS software if you want at the bottom, the top, in the middle, wherever you want it, you can adjust those settings as needed. The last step in the visual side of things is your camera or your feed. Now, obviously I had DJ Joe coming in as a video file. So once I import that video source, I could just resize it and shape it down to the size that I need, place it on the screen where I want him. However, my video needs to be live. So what I did for my video was I went to add another source and I chose my internal webcam. And that's why I have my computer that's running OBS out on this cocktail table, a distance away from my drums. This is the easiest way to stream with the camera because you could use your built-in camera. If you wanted to get a little more complex or have multiple cameras, like high definition cameras that run through HDMI, you can pick up a capture card. So I'll link down below to a few options when it comes to capture cards. But basically what that's gonna do is convert your HDMI signal from an external camera into USB. Then when you go to add a source file, you'll be able to select that capture card option and use that camera as an input. However, if you wanted to get more complex with different camera angles that are hardwired, you could pick up a device such as the ATEM Mini, which will actually act as a webcam through USB, so you won't need a capture card, or pick up something like the Roland V1HD video switcher, and then also a capture card to convert the output of that into your computer. Once you do so, you can plug in multiple camera angles, fade back and forth, but if you're a single person running a stream, that's gonna be pretty hard to do while you're focusing on DJing, playing percussion, whatever you're doing. So I went the simpler approach and I used the built-in webcam as my front-facing camera. You might have noticed in the stream, I also had a little picture in picture, which was a side view or a side camera. And what I did for that was something called camera over NDI. This is an app you can download on an iPhone or an iPad. It's called NDI Cam. I'll have a link to it down below, but basically it's a $10 app which is gonna be more affordable than any capture card you could purchase out there. It works over Wi-Fi and allows you to use that iPad as a wireless camera and import it into OBS as an NDI source. You might have to download an NDI driver to do so, but once that's done, OBS will recognize it as an NDI source and you could select that camera. 
Because it is relying over Wi-Fi, you might get a glitch or a delay or a freeze for a second, but otherwise I found it to be pretty stable throughout the full stream. What I did was put it on an iPad and I have the iPad sitting next to my drums on a little tabletop stand on a stool. This way there was a second camera angle for them to see. And then once I imported that into OBS, I shrunk it down and just put it in the corner of my video screen. Now, the last thing I did to make my life a little easier is loaded up a different iPad. I also have my phone running, but you could use any different device. Load it up with Facebook and sign into your account or, or another account, whether it's a family member's phone, whatever it is. But if you sign into Facebook and tune into your own stream, just make sure you turn the volume down, but tune into your own live stream and this will allow you to see all the comments and the people as they join. This is what I did. I simply put it on this podium back here so that I could read who was tuned into my live stream and then give them a shout out or reply to comments live in the feed. The reason I did this was because my computer that's running OBS and the actual stream software was very far away. Now to actually get your stream to Facebook through OBS is fairly easy. You could also send it to YouTube, Twitch. The only thing you really can't do in OBS is send it to Instagram, but you might've seen people going live on Instagram. It is still possible running OBS and a third party software called Yellow Duck TV. If you go to Yellow Duck TV, download that, you can install it, mess around with it, and that basically allows you to stream to Instagram once you sign into your account. If that's something you guys are interested in seeing a video on just as you know, creating your live stream in OBS for Instagram, let me know down in the comments below. I'd be happy to put something together. But again, Yellow Duck TV is how you can stream to Instagram using OBS. What you're gonna wanna do is go to facebook.com forward slash live forward slash create. Once you go here, you're gonna hit create live stream. And this is where you'll be able to select where you wanna go live. So if you wanna go live to a specific group, which I do recommend, create a private group for testing your live stream. If you create a private group, you can invite one of your friends or even join in yourself. Go live in that group. You could test your audio settings, make sure everything sounds and looks good and save it to that group afterwards so you can go back and watch it. I did this with one of my guys and actually had him giving me live feedback while I was tuning, EQing and adding effects to the drums. Once we got it just right, I hopped off there and set up a new live stream to my actual channel. What you're gonna wanna do is select use stream key. Once you do so, there's a spot to select your stream key. So you could just simply copy that link. Once you open up your OBS preferences, you can go to the stream settings, select where you want to stream to, and that's where you'll enter the appropriate stream key for whichever website that is. Once you hit okay, you're all set in the bottom right of OBS when you're ready to go, you hit start streaming, and you could also start the recording if you wanna save it to your computer after. Whatever web browser you're using with that Facebook setup now, head back over there and you'll see in the bottom right that live video should now begin. Once that begins, you should have the go live option in which you could select go live and start broadcasting it actually live to Facebook. So just to clarify what that means is once you hit start streaming in OBS, that does not mean you are live on Facebook. You still have to click go live in your facebook.com settings. I hope this video was able to help you guys out. Hopefully you were able to take bits and pieces if you're just looking to live stream a DJ. Obviously this is a bit more complicated because I was bringing in a DJ's feed, also multiple cameras, audio, trying to mic my drums, and then having to send myself a headphone mix of just his audio. It got very complicated, but we figured it out. It went really well. We went for just about an hour um, without getting shut down or anything. We just chose to end at that point. So. Something to keep in mind though too, um, I see people posting and putting that whole disclaimer thing in your live video. I hate to break it to you, that does absolutely nothing. I also wanna note I had Nick from Promo Only on my podcast the other day. If you guys haven't checked out my podcast, it's RE and Friends. Follow us on Instagram, we have a Facebook page and the podcast is streaming on Spotify so you can go listen. We have about 15 episodes up so far, new episodes every Tuesday and Thursday. But like I said, I had Nick on and we were discussing this whole Facebook situation because it's really not Facebook's fault that you guys are getting booted off from live streams. Facebook is not paying the rights and rightly so, they should not have to pay the rights because it was not designed for DJs to mass stream music to you know public audiences. So with that said, yes, you can get booted. There's really no ways around it. Although I do think by adding some percussion, it kind of tricked the algorithm because it was a little harder for their, their software detection to detect the music with the drums on top. Make sure you guys follow me on Instagram. It's at Brandon Havrilla. 
If you guys enjoyed this video, leave me a thumbs up. If you're new around here, subscribe to my channel and turn on that bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, recommendations for future videos, leave it down in the comments below. I'll do my best to respond to all those as soon as possible. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Good luck with your stream. We'll see you in the next one.